Sidearm throw. Intercepted. Picked off by the Panthers. It's Coleman with his fourth of the year. And Hillman slips out. And Hillman to the 10. Hillman to the 5 to the pylon. Touchdown, Denver. All right, here we are in Super Bowl City. It's the Fan Energy Zone. You got some energy, right, Akbar? Oh, big time energy. Come on, are I'm you ready for up. this? And it's only Tuesday I already. I can't believe it. I know. How are we going to last until Sunday? You know, I don't know, just keep it going. Keep pounding. You keep have pounding. To. All right, listen. We've been doing this all season long, and it doesn't change when we get to San Francisco. We are doing studs and duds Super Bowl edition. All right, we're going to start with the duds, though. Okay. Because. You let's have, get the duds out the way. We got, yeah, we want to do that because we want to talk about the studs and the good stuff. Okay. So let's get the duds first. And we got Ted Ginn, who he got his revenge last week against the Arizona Cardinals. And then uh, what? He's going to not do it this week? He's not going to do well, anything? Well, well, look, I, I think this when you look at the matchup, it doesn't matter where you line him up out there on the field. He's got to go up against, of course, a key to lead. Chris Harris Jr., who doesn't get a lot of love uh, like he should. But then you talk about Bradley Roby. He's Lurby, hurt, though, where, right it, now. It doesn't even matter. All right, I mean, all right. It doesn't matter where he is. But I tell you right now, when you look at Ted Ginn Jr., Ted Ginn Jr. won't have it. He's had three receptions, no touchdown in the last couple of games. Here, the last three had games. a rushing touchdown. And not a rushing a receiving touchdown, touchdown. But he's not going to be rushing against this team, no. against the Denver Broncos. <laughs> so we got Doug for Ted Ginn Jr. Okay, how about your second dud here? A running back. We're going to go with C.J. Anderson. I, I'm guessing because of the Carolina defense. Well, the Carolina defense is very strong, but I think more importantly is up in the middle. I mean, it's like the force awaken, and it starts off with star low to the lay. No pun intended there. Okay, maybe it was. Uh, but when you look at what those guys do, I mean, these guys get physical up front, and the way they shed blockers and get in the backfield, C.J. Anderson, not even necessarily their strongest runner. I mean, you look at productivity-wise, you know, Ronnie Hillman Ronnie has Hillman. been the most productive back in that backfield. So I'm going to say C.J. Anderson is going to be a dud in this game. So you don't think Peyton Manning is going – you think Peyton Manning is going to throw for touchdowns I, I, and they're I, not I, going to score rushing touchdowns? Absolutely he's going to throw what for a touchdown in this game. What about the foot? And, and guess what? Ask Owen Daniels how did he do uh, in that uh, last Owen game. Owen Daniels <laughs> yes. out of nowhere. I mean, <laughs> right. just – wow. All right. He should have been a stud last week. Let's get to the studs. Your first said, let's talk about the Carolina Panthers defensive line. Well, and, and look, we talked about them just a, a second ago with, with Quan Shorts and, of course, Star Lowe late. I want to get this. Quan Shorts, 10 sacks, 10 plus sacks. I mean, that's impressive. You look at the guys who've done it. Geno Atkins, of course. You look at guys like Aaron Donald. sacks on the year he That's has. impressive. <laughs> I mean, to get do that from the inside, from the three technique, that's hard to do. So, they're going to have to deal with that. And typically, you look at the guards on the offensive line. Those are the guys that struggle. That's the quickest access to the quarterback is from the interior. So, Quan Shore is going to put, I mean, a lot of pressure there on Peyton Manning. But remember, Peyton Manning, get that ball out. I know. He can get that ball out. <laughs> I don't know about that. Listen, all right, we got to talk about the, the Broncos defense. That's secondary. Specifically, you got one guy you're circling, and there he is, Bradley Roby. Bradley Roby. Why I, is you, he going to be the you star? Look at, you look at what he did in that last game, I mean, against uh, Tucson when he punched out the ball. He's kind of <laughs> like the unsung hero. We know all the other outstar, uh, you know, the perimeter guys get a lot of love. But this is the guy that's going to match up on some of the other receivers, guys like Jericho Cotri. I mean, so when he gets up there, he's going to have the opportunity. When Cam Newton's under duress and he has to throw that ball up, look for this guy, Bradley Roby, to make some huge plays. And we saw that again in the AFC Championship. That's why it's not good for Ted Ginn. Is that yeah. like I mean, you seriously, you look at that secondary and you have a keep to leave, Bradley Roby, Chris Harris. Chris Harris is hurting. He hasn't been the same. I, I kind of think now all of a sudden this is becoming a preview, but you look at that and it's like you wonder really what the receivers can do in Carolina. Well, you know, and this makes for an interesting game. I mean, you know, if, if they can't run, you know, if they can't throw the ball in uh, Carolina, how will they do in the run game when their run defense is strong? And then vice versa, it's the same yeah. thing. So it makes for an interesting game. But, of course, it all comes down to who's going to win the game. And I think only one team is going to win it, of course, and that's going to be the Denver Broncos. The Denver Broncos. I'm not moving from that. You're not. You Even know, a little bit? Peyton Manning might mess around and be the MVP, and you heard it from me first. All right, that's fine. Listen, we're going to be talking about it all week long right here in San Francisco. Akbar, thank you. I'll yes. see you later. What's up, man? Hey. Ha, ha, ha.